All right, tonight's brush is this golden nib. Uh, I think 22 millimeter. And it is the premium silver tip that they have. Uh, really soft, uh, plenty of give. Not tons of backbone. I like its poofiness. I set that to soak just a minute. And tonight we're going to do a straight razor shave. This is a Kloss Tornblom that uh, I got online. And it is a, it hasn't been used before. It's old stock. Um, and uh, let's see if I can, there we go. I don't know if that'll focus or anything like that. Uh, but um, I am not a, a great straight razor shaver, so do not consider this an authoritative uh, shave by any means. Anything I say is something I've learned from uh, watching shave videos or other things like that. And it's not really from too much experience. I think I've had three shaves in my life with a straight. So we'll just see how it goes. Sella Italian soap, cherry almond marzipan scent. I really like it. I'm gonna revisit that guy. I think a uh, 40, around a 45 second load is what we're gonna do today. Gave me good results in the past, and um, shaking most of the water out of the brush. Last time I was using one with a little bit more backbone, so we'll see how this brush loads it up. All right, oh, a zero right there, so let's just go ahead and start. And we'll watch it and see if it's too dry. We'll add a few drops of water in there. It's kind of a small tub. In the future, I may, you know, I was thinking about hooking some out into a tub that's easier to load. Stop after about 30 seconds. Looks like it's looks like it's picking it up just fine. So let's just proceed on for I stopped for about 10 seconds. So we'll go on to about the 55 mark. Yeah, um, as you can see, the brush was not very wet coming into it, so this is a much less bubbly of a of a load here. Just a nice scent, in my opinion. Okay, I'm gonna throw some water on my face. All right, lather bowl. Let's start mixing this up. Sella is kind of funny because I never really had any problems with it before because I was always scooping. I think I, I did brush load maybe my first or second use of it, but and it went well. And uh, But then after that I scooped it mostly and I think I would usually, because Sella doesn't require as much soap as the other artisans. And because uh, it doesn't have as many oils and butters, so the, I think my theory is that the concentration in the soap itself is is just more soap. There's more soap to, to be had per gram or whatever, so you don't need to use as much. And I think I was using uh, a lot, and so that was giving me great lathers because I was almost overloading it, you know, and so. If, Come back. To, oh, yeah, this is looking good. Not too. Just adding a half a teaspoon of uh, water has given me that. And this is a big, soft brush. I mean, it's not too big. Some might not even consider it big. You know, it's not one of those 28 millimeters or 30 millimeters or something like that. I'm going to add a little bit more water. 
uh, with a 40 second load before, I think it was just a half a teaspoon of water was, was what I was using, but I'm wondering if maybe um, that brush held, uh, I don't know, if that brush held more water or something. So because of the, the, the brush, my measurements may be very different this time. looking great yeah this is coming together really well now appearance wise it looks a little bit too uh, dry or thick but let's just kind of test it out here That's nice and slick. I can almost not feel the ridges on my fingertips. Now for straight razor shaving, um, it seems like the consensus is to go with a little bit uh, wetter of a lather. Um, and so I'm gonna add a little bit more water and take this just a little further than I might. I probably wouldn't stop at this point, even if I was shaving with a double edge razor. I'm gonna take it a little further. This, you know what? This is very interesting because this brush allows a lot more flow through. I think I'm be I'm able to lather this guy. This soap, uh, oh, it's just easier to lather it with this um, more poofy brush than the than the densely packed one that I used before I was just having with that brush with the other brush and it was uh, it was this one right here see there's just so many hairs it's it's a the loft is shorter um, and it just was harder to lather solo with that I was I was getting lathers that were just too thin, too watery, just wasn't combining it as well or something. This is much more normal. Okay. Looking pretty good. Let's just go a little bit more and I think that'll be it. This is the lather that I remember generating from, from Sella. It's just, uh, it doesn't have as many butter, butters and oils like I said. And so um, it's just, it's been around for a hundred years. This recipe has and the company and all that and there's a reason uh, Sella is because it, uh, it I don't think it has too many preservatives maybe none and so if you uh, if you have a large arsenal of soaps you may want to make sure that this guy gets sealed up really well um, he may lose, his color may change, he may lose a little bit of his scent, um, that kind of thing. So pay a little closer attention with the preservation of Sella than, than other soaps. If you buy one of those br big uh, kilogram bricks, I think that may be one of the best economical deals in, in wet shaving soap. Um, you, you probably need to seal that kilogram block up what you don't use what you're not using currently um, seal it up into a, at least a ziploc bag um, so that you can keep it airtight as best you can some people even put it in their fridge and then that way you can make it last a nice long time all right i think i think we're good 
that is uh, one and two thirds water, teaspoons of water, lightly wet brush, and let's uh, splash one more time, then put on the lather. All right. This may need a little bit more water. Yeah, it does. Yeah, that's better. I was so scared to add water to this guy because, I don't know, with that other brush, it was just different. This is much more normal. I could have taken this a little bit more uh, deeper into hydration like I usually do. And now we've pretty much used up the two teaspoons that were in there. I'm going to put on a little bit more water. About seven drops at a time, something like that. So for me, it seems that this comfy, low backbone, poofy badger, three band silver tip is just a better brush for Sella. It must just mix it in a different way. That's kind of more in line with what, how I do my soaps. It's just a, a big difference, it seems, in how it does. How about that? Now I'm going to go ahead and put in a little bit more water in my bowl here. Um, since we know that that lather was just a hair too thick. Alright, now one thing we want to watch out with straights is this hinge area. We want to keep it, and this is from other really good shavers, um, we want to keep it this area dry because if water gets in there, it's, you can't really get it out too well, and then you, it starts to develop rust and things like that. Um, this is one of the uh, grips um, that people can use. Some people do a, a three-fingered uh, grip like this. I think I'm gonna start out with, with this and see what happens. A 30-degree angle, I think, is approximately what you need to work on uh, achieve the uh, if if you're if this uh, the the back of the razor the spine here is too close to your skin then you end up kind of tugging on the hairs and uh, and not really uh, getting as, as close of a cut if you're tilted too far out this way then you end up cutting yourself cutting your skin so and of course uh, always go down like that rather than any, any kind of a crossways motion you can uh, if you i think if you have tough areas um, where you need certain angles you can do a little bit of a diagonal slide but very much caution i believe you should exercise during that maneuver um, some people like to go ahead and uh, this is obviously a very natural type motion here uh, but but then some people just keep it in the same hand and go over here But a lot of the recommendation that I was reading 
was that you should just learn to switch hands. And so that's what I've been trying to do during my few shaves. So 30 degrees, let's go ahead and, and do it. Now I find it, see I'm looking in the mirror, I find it kind of hard to see to be able to have that 30 degree angle um, and to see where the blade's gonna go. Um, so let's just kind of tilt myself a little bit and then I can look, that looks about right. There's some tugging there. But maybe that is expected. Now some people, I believe, don't even rinse their their blade like I just did maybe to keep the uh, that hinge area dry um, but I'm just making sure it stays away from the hinge area I think some people just wipe it on a towel so if you're new one of the popular suggestions is to Um, just do your cheeks it's the easiest area um, and uh, just do your cheeks and then finish when you're new finish the rest of your face with a, uh, a double-edged razor now previously I had pretty good experience now this is much more comfortable on this side and I found that to be true even with double edges So, a little, you know, tuggy, very tuggy on both. But this was smoother, but over here especially, um, very tuggy. There's still some hairs left. Um, I, I don't know how to uh, what to expect. This has been honed by a, you know, a pretty reputable reputable guy, and so I'm pretty sure that the uh, that this problem here is not the not the blade. And so now we're gonna kind of try to. I know with double edges on this bottom part of my neck here, I get better results coming up from the bottom. I need to try to make sure I have a, a slight tilt that way. If you've come to see blood, you may. I'm not saying there won't be blood. I think one of the best ways is just go slow. Work on your angle and good technique. And then let muscle memory over time allow you to be faster. Let's see. Maybe uh, try this type of grip here. So this hair points kind of this way. So let's uh, let's try just a uh, kind of a north south with a slight diagonal tilt. So I was saying that conventional wisdom says to not shave your neck like I'm doing. but do it with a double edge. Um, and the first few times I tried it, I believe I 
had too shallow of an angle and so it was a very safe shave i didn't really cut myself very much i don't even think at all but i didn't get a great cut and so i went ahead and decided to go ahead and try to shave my neck today and we'll see how it ends up now let's edge the uh sides here as always be cognizant of the uh, the heel and the toe of the blade an area where you're trying to get uh, especially on the neck or or over here in this area you may be focused on the uh, the belly area edge that's cutting what you want but then this uh, the toe could be over here on your ear and you could get an ear slice um, because it's it's there and you're not paying attention to that part of the blade all right Whew. that's done uh, I think pretty pretty good for a first pass rinse I believe that other was a bit too dry so I, I like I said I added some water to the bowl this is more the visual texture that I'm used to working with. The bulbousness. See, there's not too many waves and peaks and things like that. And so I believe this is going to give me a better lather for, for straight shaving. And this still actually can probably use a bit more water. I'll just add to the middle there we go let's try that out So this lather was under hydrated so that one and two thirds for this amount of loading was not enough water all right let's hit it again like I said uh, there's lots of good yeah, that's an interesting concept here. I'm trying to get the right angle, but if I if I have my hand in the right position, then I can't see the edge <laughs> unless I turn to the side like this. I'm trying to keep that 30 degree angle. Much more comfortable this time. So yeah, that first uh, pass was, was quite tuggy, um, and I don't know if that's just what straight razor shavers get used to, because I mean, I have heard, this is very nice, I have heard guys say when they make the switch to straights that they Sometimes don't go back to the double edge. Now, I'm a chunky guy. I've got a fat face. So one of the nice features of that is I have a nice <laughs> rounded jawline. I don't have a, a very sharp angled jawline. So I'm not going to be able to offer you any tips if you're trying to get that chiseled jawline shaved properly another advantage of being chunky is you don't have to buy as many jackets because you're never as cold as everybody else all right switch hands for the other side
Yeah, I believe my guess is that shorter strokes on the neck are more important than those same strokes on the cheeks uh, because the angle changes so quickly and you need to make sure you adjust. Over here, I can make myself with a DE pretty well. So I'm gonna be careful with that. Um, switch, switch to kind of the upturned motion. Seems to give me better luck with the double edge to I have got, oh, do I have a nick right there? Nah, maybe not. I've got some holes in some inconvenient places. Well, second pass. Well, it is a blotchy shave. I've done two passes and I don't have nearly a close enough shave as I do at this point with a double edge. But I think that's kind of to be expected. I'm gonna put a little bit of extra water on my face here. I, I had an irritation spot right around here that the uh, cold water was letting me know existed. Um, but generally, pretty good shape. Going well. Do it again. Much more confident uh, now that the there's a lot less tugging. I feel. faster. One good thing, the, the double edge shaving can do for you is help you to learn your uh, hair growth patterns. And that is of great help when it's more critical. Oh, I gotta remember to switch hands. That is a lot more critical. And I believe the uh, Skin stretching is a lot more critical in straight razor shaving. I think a lot of people who do their cheeks like this, they'll reach over with their other hand and make it taut. And so I may be making, making a mistake there, but I don't care. I'm not focused on getting a super close shave. Tilting my chin up so that I get a 
some skin that's somewhat stretched. How about that? Feels good. Oh yeah, there's that little little weeper right there. We have blood, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I believe you have to be very careful if you're like me and you have these neck creases. Don't let your edge be parallel with those creases as you cross them. We'll tilt it slightly and that can help you to not get irritation or cut. And I, I believe I, I learned that with a DE as well. Next time I'm going to try it with... Uh, without rinsing the blade, with just wiping it, you know, like I see so many barbers do. Yeah, a little bleeder right there. I think my, uh, yeah, I'm getting a little better results. It's not as good as I've gotten with a DE, but, uh, so that's three passes in, and uh, rinse. So I feel like my cheeks are reasonably well done. I think it's good enough for, you know, an office type environment where I'm not, under too much scrutiny uh, so I'm just gonna do my neck only pass here um, my cheeks would have been done a lot better with a DE but that's just because I've had a lot more experience with that um, shave is taking a little bit longer than with a DE but that is also to be expected okay now let's pay attention, special attention to my trouble spots here. Trying to come at them in a slightly different angle than before, but mainly just want to have good technique, good angles. I'm just going to be happy with that. In the future, I think I might uh, switch to the style where you uh, just have a, a cloth right here and you just wipe your blade on that um, because then your hands don't get wet. I'm not having a wet hand near this hinge part. Uh, also, kind of slinging the uh, water off. I'm not going to ding the razor against the faucet or anything like that. So I think I'm gonna try that next time. And, uh, all right, let's rinse this off. For post shave today, I'm gonna to use my Nivea Original. It has a little bit of alcohol in it. And I like that because it's got the nourishing aspects of a balm with the diagnostic and antiseptic actions aspects of a alcohol-based splash. I'm getting a few tiny twinges, but very comfortable. It's a pretty good successful shave considering considering my lack of experience with straights. Alright, well 
Well, shoot, I'm happy with that. Uh, so, uh, oh, and here's a note. The uh, Sella has a balm that they make, and I really enjoyed it. My wife didn't really like the scent too much. I thought it was kind of a, a warm, uh, masculine scent that was kind of pretty generic, and so I'm kind of surprised, but I think she thought it was maybe a little too classic, a little too old manish or something. Um, but uh, I wanted to mention that I enjoyed it for quite a while, but it went bad. Um, I think after about a, a year, it, it went bad. I, uh, and that's, that's kind of to be expected. If you look on the packaging, it says after you open it, you know, stop, you know, kind of cease using it after about 12 months. And so it did fulfill its uh, time destiny, if you will. But I've got a bunch of, uh, you know, I don't have a ton of aftershaves and balms and stuff, but I have enough to where I, uh, didn't really use it to its full potential at all. I think I maybe used, used 10% of it. Um, so if you have a larger balm collection, then the cell balm may not be one to put in there if you're not going to use it uh, very much. Uh, and that's because of the lack of preservatives they put in there. And so that's kind of a cool aspect to it. And so if you are if you do dedicate yourself to kind of one balm or something, then, uh, then that might be a good one to do if you like the purity aspect. Uh, all right, so straight razors. Um, if you're new to them like me, here's some good information for you. You don't need a whole bunch of equipment to get started. Uh, this one I haven't shaved with, and so I did not have to strop it before shaving. Um, you basically uh, need uh, it's two things. You need a razor and a strop. And so you would, uh, uh, the leather strop. And so uh, you take your razor and there's online videos about this. And so you'd strop it about 40 or 60 times. Um, and one of the key things, and every good video will show you this, but when you're on a strop and you're, you always go backwards, you never go forwards. And so you would strop it this way. And then when it's time, you, you uh, are here, I'll show you this going away from you. You would do it like this, but then don't do the thing where you f rotate it this way you can roll your edge if that contacts the leather while you're doing this motion okay what everybody recommends is to do it this way and then roll it over the spine like that and then come back roll over the spine like that see and that way you preserve your edge a lot better so that I wanted to make sure I mentioned that so leather strop before the shave and the blade that's that's all you need and what that will do is that will keep your edge, assuming it has been properly honed and it's a good shaving razor, um, that will keep your edge in great shape for, I think they say about three to six months, depending on number of uses and, and your, if you don't booger it up with really bad technique or bad stropping. Um, and so, uh, but then when that time comes, four months down the road, it's no longer able to be resharpened by the leather, okay? Then you have to, at the very basic, you would send it off to some guy to have him hone it up for you and refresh the edge. Uh, now, and that's the basic thing. And maybe that's 30 bucks, you know, it all depends. But, uh, but that's what a lot of people do. Well, here, the other, let's step up from that. So that's the basic, buy less for yourself in the beginning. Step up from that. Buy yourself a, uh, a stone that's maybe 12,000 grit. Not exactly sure, do your research on that, but it's a high number, not a low number. 12,000, I, I think 20,000 uh, might be a little high, but about 12,000 will refresh your edge. Um, and there's plenty of videos to, to learn how to do that. And so then you can, um, after about four months of stropping only, you can then use that stone uh, to um, refresh your edge and now it's ready to go again. Uh, you could get a 20,000 stone or a 16 or whatever and take it to another stone level if you wanted, but that's not essential. Um, you'll get a great, uh, from what I understand, you'll get a great edge uh, with a good 12,000 grit stone. Maybe even an 8,000 grit, but that's on the line. Make sure you do your research about that aspect. Um, but then that stone right there, that can be all that you need ever to shave because when you need to refresh it, you whip out that stone refresh the razor and then now you're back to leather stropping only before you shave 
for the next four months. Then you take to the stone to refresh the edge, you know, and then repeat the cycle. And I say four months just to kind of pick an average. Of course, like I said, it could be three to six or something. Um, and so the, you don't need a, a lot of stones from, you know, 200 stepping all the way up to the 12,000. Now you can get a really slick edge by going above 12,000, but do your research there and if you're interested in that. But uh, so that is, that's all the equipment you need. And with that 12,000 stone or, you know, whatever is best around that area uh, of fineness, um, that can keep you going forever because your edge never loses its basic shape. If you, however, let your blade go too far, or if, uh, if you buy one off eBay, or a family heirloom gets passed to you, and the edge just is too far gone for that 12,000 grit stone, that's when you either need to buy some stones before that. They can get expensive if you're, you know, if you get good ones. Um, or you need to go ahead and send that off to a Honemeister. Uh, that's one of the terms that people have for the guys who hone razors. Um, and so that's your choice. I, I might recommend for your average Joe, if you do get one off eBay like that, go ahead and send it off to a person to let them hone it. Um, and, uh, and then you can just have your 12,000 stone um, to be able to just keep it refreshed. Okay, so that's why people need the lower stones. If you have to set the bevel, if it's been worn down too much, to, to have that higher grit stone refresh it. Uh, so, now, I've been saying that 12,000 grit stone, but I think there's something that other people use to refresh them. Uh, I think uh, oxide, chromium oxide, I, I can't remember exactly what it is. And sometimes they put it on the back side of a leather strop or the cloth part of a strop. Uh, I think sometimes they that is used instead of that 12,000 grit stone. I'm not sure you have to do your research. I'm just giving you a broad idea of what's possible here because you may be a newbie like me in terms of straights and you're concerned with how much stuff am I going to have to buy. Now where are you going to get a good straight? Um, they're available online um, but the trouble is that uh, they can be really really expensive. $200, $500, you know, and so I, I'm not going to offer you any tips about how, how to choose one because I don't know enough to say about that. But I'm just saying get some do some good research because you can really get ripped off. Um, I will say that the gold dollar, um, those cheap uh, straights, are the the metal is just not hard enough to often to really hold a good edge, and so they they're probably not going to be worth your time. Uh, there are also a bunch of razor looking things on eBay and their steel is just not good enough quality to hold a good shaving edge. They just look like they're razors and their people are selling them and even calling them straight razors, but they're not. And so a lot of research needs to be done before you buy something off eBay like that. Uh, but there's a lot of good, the good thing is there's a lot of good vintage steel out there. And so uh, if you, you can get one for $15, uh, and if you know what you're looking for and then send it to a guy for 30 and now you've got a great shaving razor for, you know, $45. Um, and, uh, so there you go. This, um, the one I had earlier before that I tried online, um, it was, it was one from a guy named Rock Trader on uh, Reddit and he has a, uh, a collection of razors where the, it's not a big name but it's good quality steel and he calls them his sight unseen razors and i think that's a great way to get uh to get in on this this hobby to try out to see if you might like to shave with a straight because those sight unseen razors they're not going to win any beauty contests but it's good steel and he's a good hone guy and so he'll you'll get a razor that will function really well for you and that good steel it may be a hundred years old but it'll last another hundred years or two hundred years without a problem with good care and so you could end up with a lifetime razor for thirty dollars okay so i think it's a great way to go to try it out of course you'll have to buy a strop as well and he does offer a strop i don't have one of his and i'm sure it's fine but i managed to get mine through a sale and so there we go um, that's one recommendation if you want to get started at a pretty inexpensive cost. Um, he can send you one that's been honed, it's ready to shave, um, and you're, you're ready to go. Shave ready is a keyword to look for. Um, 
but some people on eBay might be throwing it around when they shouldn't. So be careful with that too. All right, <clears throat> especially one of the things you'll see are those uh, Fleet Street type uh, razors, and it, it's got this. Got to be always be careful when you're holding these guys. It's got this it, tang or whatever out, out out this way, and the blade doesn't stop here. It comes all the way down. You know, I think that's those are meant to be carried as a almost like a pocket knife or and a sheath in your belt or something. It's and to be used as a knife and not as a shaving razor. Well, there we go. Uh, Sella did well for me. I did mix it a little dry. Um, but my skin is feeling good. I'm happy about that. This little guy stopped on his own. Um, so it could have been it could have been better results, but uh, I imagine that's going to come with time. Uh, really happy with that one. So fourth, fourth shave under my belt. Not too bad. Also in my broad <clears throat> introduction into stray razor shaving that I'm giving you, I'll go ahead and mention that there are some other terms you, you'll be able to see regarding straights, uh, full hollow, half hollow, quarter hollow, wedge, and those all refer to the shape of the blade. Now you'll notice that the um, it may be fat here along the spine, but then it pretty quickly gets thin and then goes all the way to the blade edge. Now I believe mine right here, here I believe it is called a, uh, a frame back or a pseudo frame back uh, because of that. And so it's a little bit different than, than standard, but uh, I mean, it's a different type. A, a wedge doesn't have this concave cut out. It looks more like a triangle right here, all the way up to the tip. Okay, and that's gonna be a very fixed, kind of heavyish uh, blade. And when I say fixed, I mean the, there's the, the edge is not gonna have very much flex. See, this is a very thin edge right here. And so it's got a little bit of flex to it. Now, I don't, I'm not, enough of an experienced shaver to know whether what kind of people like that kind of flex uh, what kind of people don't you know and so uh, when it says hollow when it says half hollow that's talking about how much is it uh, is metal how much metal is remaining if it's full hollow then I believe it's more like this one where a whole lot of the metal has been removed if it's quarter hollow then it may be thicker here in the middle part so that's a term to be familiar with uh, another one is the measurement. It might say 11 sixteenths or 5 eighths. And that's talking about the this distance right here. If it's a uh, an 8 eighths or something like that, then that means it's 1 inch. And so it's going to be a taller or thicker than this one. Okay. I think I remember seeing that 5 eighths was a good uh, width to a depth, if you will. Um, for beginners because if you that thick one those really thick ones that you see they look cool but I don't know that they're all that recommended for beginners uh, so the, this this I think this one is is roughly uh, a good distance a good uh, depth for beginners and I think it's more maneuverable as well and so that's something uh, five eighths those that's the measurement that's the distance right here um, how it is and I guess over time as you have it sharpened and all that I guess you would have to change your distance as it would slowly get smaller and smaller but anyway there you go there's a really basic overview of straight razor shaving always handle them carefully and uh, face feels good the balm worked pretty well it's not an amazing balm but it's only five bucks and I've got oily skin, so it works for me. All right, cleaning up time. So this big poofy badger with lots of flex and not a lot of backbone just seems to be, for my style of lathering, a uh, better able to give me a better lather with uh, Sella uh, quicker, definitely, and just, I think, better in general. So I was able to put more water into Sella without it getting uh, too thin. So... Who knows? So by the end of the shave, 45 second load with that soft silver tip brush. And I used three teaspoons of water. And that is more commensurate with 
uh, kind of standard water amounts throughout a bunch of different varieties of soaps. Whereas with the other brush, with the more dense brush, I was using about um, a half a teaspoon, not three teaspoons, but more like a half a teaspoon to get something uh, really, really slick and creamy. Now with this lather I got today, it was a little less creamy, I'll give you that, but um, it's still quite a difference in water. So it just depended on the brush, I think. All right, well, here we are at the end. It's been a while. And uh, if you've tuned in this far, congratulations. And uh, face feels great. So that's good. A little irritation generated by this guy is gone. Balm is, is working. Happy with my result. Rough first pass, very tuggy. Probably my fault. I probably need to improve my technique there. So we'll see if that changes over time. I think uh, something that's thrown around is wait until about 100 shaves before you expect too much of yourself because there's a whole lot of muscle memory that goes on. Switching hands, uh, just getting the right pressure and angle, keeping that consistent. That's just going to take a while. And so don't, don't, uh, don't get down on yourself if you don't pick it up super quickly. Lynn Abrams is one that I've learned a lot from uh, and I believe is, is fair, a fairly ubiquitous name in the shaving world. He's got some videos out that even show you how to hone uh, and they show you how to shave. And so I'd, I'd recommend his videos, L-Y-N-N -N, Abrams. And, uh, and so that might be some good content for you. Obviously you can get online with the forums and stuff and uh, look for other people who've, rec who've recommended good stuff. but. Uh, I can I can recommend his videos. They seem good to me. And he's been doing it for a very long time. All right. All done. There we go. I hope this has helped a few of you out there. Um, like I said, I am not an authoritative uh, shaver by any means regarding straight shaving. and uh, But I do need a lather. That one worked out pretty well today. And uh, so for what it's worth... This is Sugar Daddy Shaves. You take care and have a good night.